Hello fellow mutants, welcome back to another video, and in this video, I guess Nemo was tell this guest story in here, <laughs> but uh, as he shifts, no shifting the camera please, and in this video we're going to talk about everything we know about the Seth Rogen's Nistura movie, Mutant Mayhem. Now, I did read this article before, and they did do say Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem quite a bit in this video. So what I'm going to do is, well, uh, I will sometimes say the full night title, but for the most part, I'll say Mutant Mayhem because saying Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem is kind of a mouthful. So, uh, yeah, I hope you guys are having a wonderful Halloween. I uh, am going to upload this on Halloween. It is October 30th by the time I'm recording. So let's do this shit. Taki Mushrooms. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem is shaping up to be one of the 2023's most anticipated releases. The titular crime fighting adolescent reptiles have been getting uh, into pizza eating, butt kicking, antics since they were created by comics artists Kevin Eastman and Peter. Lord, layered. I can never uh, pronounce his last name. In 1983, initially made to made as a parody of superhero comics, the characters became a surprise hit, launching in a successful toy line. From there, the turtles received their own Saturday morning cartoon, which ran from 1987 to 1996, uh, cementing their long-lasting reputation as a popular culture as a popular po culture force uh, blah, blah, blah. long lasting reputation as a pop culture force to be reckoned with their escape pads uh, continue throughout the years with their own other comics anime series video games and a number of live action films in fact the first live action I do apologize for that if like you heard does it screen went blank on your guys and I do apologize for that. I don't know why my laptop likes to do that. Anywho, um in fact their their first live action adventure in nineteen ninety even became the highest grossing independent film in the time of its release. They even crossed over with the Batman. How much better can that get? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutant Mayhem, will be the second theatrical release animated film in the franchise, following 2007's TMNT. With TMNT, it's one of my, like, the T, like the 2007 TMNT film is one of my favorite films of all time. And I actually recently did a review of that film, which I will put in a link in the description. So if you guys want to, uh watch that you guys can but I will also have the link to this article in the pinned comments down below so if you guys want to read this just go to the comment section anywho the um the project was announced by Nickelodeon movies and Paramount Pictures in the summer of 2020 with Seth Rogen producing through his producer roles was I'm kind of like someone hesitant about Seth Rogen doing this because Ninja Turtles is my favorite franchise. Like, it's my favorite pop culture thing. Hell. Sorry for the mess on the floor, but you see this? I, I'm going, I'm planning to clean this up anyway today. I don't care if you guys see this messy thing. But yeah. I'm wearing Ninja Turtles uh, shirt. And, um, that's proof how much of an Instagram fan I am. And, yeah, ignore the mess. I, it was, I accumulated that over the past, like, two days doing some homework. <laughs> I need to clean this area up anyway, so. Anywho. Uh, da -da 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 -da. The partnership seemed to be a fitting one as Nick Lodian has seen great success in the 2012 Turtles animated series reboot as and its follow up in twenty eighteen with Netflix. Rogan is also a big fan of the franchise with the passion of display. What can we expect from Mutant Mayhem? So the next part is we talk about the release date. 
Uh, Mirror and Mayhem is certainly slated for release all on August 4th, 2023. The release has actually been moved up from the original date. It was originally set to be for a release of August 11th, 2023. The change was announced in January 2021 by Fandango Managing Director Eric Davis on Twitter, where Davis shared numerous changes in Paramount Pictures release schedules. Along with the uh, animated feature, Paramount has announced other Ninja Turtle-centric pro- projects. 2023 will also see the start of a series of spin-offs films produced by Nickelodeon Animation to be the start on Paramount Plus. Rather than focus on the turtles, the films will be film-centric, following up never be foretold stories behind the franchise colorful rogues gallery. And I think I did a video of that actually. Um you guys can fact check me by going on my uh on my long list of videos I have on this channel. It's relatively new, I have to say, from my channel. It's like about a month old. So it shouldn't be that much of a find. Long find, I mean. Although we don't exact, don't exactly which villains will be included in the lineup, at the very least, we can expect entries focus, say, on the Shredder and maybe Krang, the two popular the two most popular turtle adversaries. Additionally, Michael Bay will be producing a new live action film, Reboot. Bay, like, at first, I thought that was, like, Reboot's and, like, gonna keep his reboot and do an Ninja Turtle 3. But it says on here, Bay previously produced two live action Ninja Turtle movies released in 2014 and 2016. Although 2016 sequel, uh, Out of the Shadows, received slightly better reviews than its 2014, um, financially successful, grossing about $245 million worldwide at the box office on a $135 million budget, the film was, no, uh, the film will be written by Colin and Casey Jost per deadline. And what's the plot of Mutant Mayhem? Well, there's no official description. Seth Rogen, the f- film's co-producer and self-proclaimed fan of the Heroes in the Half Cell, Turtle Power, sorry, has expressed interest in honing in on the inherent coming of age aspect of the franchise. As long as, as a lot, as a lifelong Ninja Turtle fan, weirdly, the teenage part of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was always the part that stuck out to me the most. Um, and as someone who has loved teenage movies and who made a lot of teenage movies and who literally got their start in their profession by writing a teenage movie, the idea of, of kind of honing in that in that element was really exciting to us. Rogan, best known for writing, directing, and producing such acclaimed comedies as Superbad, Pineapple Express, and This Is The End, alongside frequent collaborators Evan Goldberg and James Weaver, surely has a first mindset when it approaches the nearly 40-year-old uh, franchise. In fact, even Ninja Turtles co-creator Kevin Eastman admits to being a fan of Rogan's vision and hopes not to influence the production too heavily. And that's where I have the cautious um cautiously cautious optimism. Hey Nemo, you have cause you're excited for this film? Are you excited? My cat's like I love you daddy. Love you too Nemo. But I because if Kevin Eastman is liking this, who's, I, like, it should be good. I mean, he had a hand, Kevin Eastman had a hand, also what well, Peter Laird did too. Both the co- co-creators of the Ninsteros helped in this, and the last Ronin is debatably the best comic book in the Ninsteros line I've read. 
which I highly recommend getting this because the last one was pretty badass. So if Kevin Eastman, a co-creator of the Ninja Turtles, is backing Seth Rogen, that that makes me constantly optimistic. Optimistic that Kevin Eastman is um a fan of this causes because it's Seth Rogen. Just saying. Anywho, another major influence in the film is director Jeff Lowe, who made his directorial debut with the 2021 Oscar-nominated Sony Picture animated film, The Mitchells vs. The Machines. Lowe seeks to go for an expressive animation style, hoping to capture a punk-like, exaggerated look. A punk version on the Ninja Turtles. I don't know how that I feel about that. I have to see the final like I have to see a trailer of Mutant Mayhem for making like see if I really like that or not. Cause at the moment I'm kind of like, can it work? And by for all means it can work, but I don't know. I'm hesitant. Anyways, and now we're going to the cast. At that moment, no voice cast has been announced for today's Prince and Turtles Mutant Mayhem. However, co-star Seth Rogen, oh, co-producer Seth Rogen, stated in a tweet that they are planning to cast actual teenagers to voice the titular Turtles. A surprising as it may sound for the franchise that literally begins with the word teenage, this will be the first time any Ninja Turtle property will be a teenager will have teenagers as the turtles voices, keeping in line with Rogan's intention of focusing more on the adolescent elements of the story. In the past, the turtles have always been voiced by adults who with the likes of Johnny Knoxville, Rob Paulson, Sean Astin and Corey Feldman, amongst many others. Talking on these I Taking on these iconic roles through various films and shows throughout franchise history, and I, uh, I have to say this: even though I'm, I go a bit easier on the like youthful actors than I do on uh, adult actors, because I realize there's like different the youthful actors. The the acting is a different caliber than adult actors. They're not at like they are. Some youthful actors are really good, but some could could use the, some work to get to be really good. So, I don't. I actually, I thought like as I'm reading through, through this a second time. I at first I was thinking, is that a good idea to have teenage voice actors do this? But now, like, since I've been thinking about this more and more, I don't mind. Like, it shouldn't be an issue. I mean, as long as these teenagers can embody Leonardo, Donatello, Raphael, and Michelangelo, then I, it's, it's, everything should be good. Like, I wouldn't mind. I, I'm, I'm a lifelong Nitro fan, too. I am very particular on this type of thing. So I really want this to be good. I really want Mutant Mayhem to be good. I really do. So outside of the four main brothers, Raph, Leo, Mikey, and Donnie, we have we can speculate that the Turtles wise sensei and father figure Splinter, the rat, will be featured as well. And oh uh, there I feel like with Casey and April, which they do mention in a bit, uh they can get away with having no Casey Jones or April in the movie, but Splinter is definitely a must. Unless you're going to do it some like how the last Ronin in present day is like, where maybe like the Shredder killed um Splinter. You gotta have an it. Like whenever you, whenever you have an intro of movie, Splinter is a given. April O'Neil and Casey Jones is like more optional than Splinter, but Splinter is a must. 
if you're gonna make an eternal movie. Unless, like I said, if you're gonna say, hey, we are going to establish early on in the movie, rather if we see it or like get a verbal, it verbally, Splinter is going, it is dead. And I wouldn't mind. I, like, then I wouldn't mind that route. Like, but I highly doubt that Seth Rogen is going to take that route. But anyways, their own allies, including Spunky, New Reporter April New, and Hockey Mask Wearing Official Nancy Casey Jones, are also sure to return. With most incarnations utilize the Shredder to go to Batty, this may be a good chance to allow lesser experienced adversaries, Bebop and Roxade, to have the spotlight. The part animal, part human, thug to certainly are certainly a threat, but their naive nature makes them a bit more nasty bullies. Once again, fitting into the place where Rogan's passionate coming of age vision, and I have to say, I don't mind that either, cause um, the turtles like. Um, like, having Bebop and Rocksteady take front stage could be a good thing. But I feel like if you're going to have Bebop and Rocksteady as center stage, then you will have to already establish that Shredder has been around for some time. Because if you don't, then that could, like, fall off real quick. Because, at least in the 1980s cartoon... Strider and Krang brought in two like like two gangsters like a, a gang, and they had two volunteers. Bebop and Rocksteady volunteered, and that's how they got into the rhinoceros and warthog that we come to know with them as. And so, if we don't get at least the Strider, we can kind of get away with not having Krang as part of that origin. But if we don't have Str- at least Strider as part of that, then having Bebop and Rocksteady as the main baddies of the film will be, um, not so good. Sir, you can debatably say, if Strider is, like, taking backseat and letting Bebop and Rocksteady be the main baddies shown in the film, Strider's really the true villain of the film because he's pulling everything from the, from dark, from behind, a, and that point would be also valid. But having Leonardo, uh, having Shredder there, it, you don't, you need at least Shredder to make Bebop and Rocksteady work, in my opinion. Otherwise, like I said, I cannot see that going ending well. And that makes sense. But, that's the article. How do you guys feel about this article? This got me from like being like why is Seth Rogen making an instrumental movie which I am still am in a way to I'm somewhat optimistic about this cause Kevin Eastman is a fan of Seth Rogen's uh vision and I and if Kevin Eastman is interested in that then that makes me realize that I probably should not be so quick to like say I got no faith in Seth Rogen I should wait until his movie comes out to see it to fairly judge it and like I said Gavin Eastman being a fan of Rogen's Turtles is a sign where we should at least give it a shot in my opinion Anywho, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section down below. With that said, I love you guys. Have a wonderful day. Be kind one another. And I'll talk to you guys later. And cowabunga dudes. Here's in the half. So, to power. Go ninja, go ninja, go.